Hello, my name is Odonga Oto. I'm a political philosopher. Idi Amin Dada. Should a school be erected in his memory? I've seen the MP, former MP Fungaru Kaps Hassan Obongi, wrote a letter to the Ministry of Higher Education and Sport that they want to establish the Idi Amin Institute in Uganda. And the president, Yuweri Kagota Museveni, objected and said, Amin has committed atrocities in Uganda and we don't want anything in his memory. We all know and confirmed report states that Idi Amin Dada, while president, killed between 100,000 to 500,000 Ugandans, mostly Acholis and Lange. We know that. But I wanted to philosophically expose some of the things that Amin did. Then I will pose the question at the end whether we really need that institute. Idi Amin, number one, released all political detainees in Uganda on assumption of power, those that were incarcerated by Obote. Idi Amin promoted sports. During Amin's time, Akivua got a gold medal. Uganda went up to the finals in the African Cup of Nations in 1978 against Ghana. Coach Tom Luanga played in that team during Amin's regime. Amin opened embassies in Nairobi, in New York, in Geneva, in uh, Brussels, in all the capitals of the country at prime locations. And confirmed reports has it that he had 17 separate properties in London, other than the official residence of the ambassador. Idi Amin united the factions of the Muslims in Uganda under the Uganda Muslim Supreme Council. Idi Amin created Uganda Airlines. And for your information, get these details right. We had 65 Air Force planes, that included the L-29, that included the Twin Otters, the MiG-17, and MiG-21. Housing. Idi Amin constructed housing for the government and the people of Uganda. He built 872 flats in Bogolobi. In Bukoto White, 130 flats. Bukoto Brown, 180 flats. Kololo, 80 houses. Nakasero, 44 houses. Wandegea, 136 houses. Luwafo Estes, 51. That is under the government of President Idi Amin Dada. Idi Amin established satellite bases in Uganda. The first time, at that time, only Nigeria had satellite bases. He established one in Mpoma in Uganda and the second one in Mbachi, the second in Africa. Idi Amin created Uganda Railways Corporation in 1977 after the collapse of the East African community. President Idi Amin created Uganda Development Bank to help uh, businessmen get money at affordable interest rates. Cre Idi Amin built the biggest oil reserves in Africa. He built it in Jinja and it took one month to construct the biggest fuel and oil reserves in the African continent at that time. The constructors worked day and night. Now, the philosophical question is, are Ugandans ready to confront their past? South Africa had a similar experience. The statute of Cecil Rhodes was constructed in South Africa. Cecil Rhodes lived between 1835 and 1902. He was the prime minister of Cape Colony. But recently, there have been massive demonstrations in South Africa that the statutes of Cecil, Cecil Rhodes should be pulled down because it makes South Africa confront their ugly past. Now, this question is philosophical. Are we ready to confront our past or we are ready to erase it under the carpets as if nothing happened? This question has to be revisited. Every leader has the pro and con. Ugandans should ask themselves, are we ready to confront our past? When we have an institute erected in memory of uh, Idi Amin Dada, the way it is being muted by Honorable Fungaru Kaps Hassan, 
What message would it pass to our past? Wouldn't it remind us of the good things Idi Amin did? Or it will remind us of the bad things that Idi Amin did? Ugandans should confront their past, says Honorable Dr. Udongaoto. Let the debate begin. Thank you very much.